Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habitu fillah continue on in our study in the book Al-Kitab or Kitab Fil Iman by Imam Abi Ubaid Al-Qasim bin Salam Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah We left off where the Imam was mentioning more adillah more evidences from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the fact that Iman fluctuates and that Iman has different levels and that Iman is composed of those three components as we mentioned prior to this which are that Iman is uh, actions of the heart and it is a statement of the tongue like the shahada and it is actions of the limbs and the murjia they deny the actions of the limbs or that actions are not a part of iman and that in summation is what the different groups of the murjia what they believe and that uh, the murjia Murjia to Fuqaha that we were speaking about that some of the great Imams in the religion fell into from the Hanafiya especially and so the, then the Imam he mentioned he said Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Fi Kitab al Karim and whenever there comes down a chapter of the Quran some of them the hypocrites say which of you has had his faith increased by it as for those that believe it has increased their faith and they rejoice letting us know that what that in faith increases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this fi kitab al -kareem. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al -kareem. the believers are those who when Allah is mentioned feel a fear in their hearts and when his verses are recited unto them they increase their faith and they put their trust in their Lord so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the believers, that their faith is increased when they hear uh, uh, the, the, the Quran recited, when they hear the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they hear the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their iman is increased. So letting us know that what? Iman fluctuates, that iman increases and that it is not static, it does not stay the same. And other places in the Quran similar to this, and then the Imam said, Do you not see that Allah the Blessed and Exalted did not reveal faith as one entity? Just as He did not reveal the Qur'an as one entity, meaning the Qur'an was not revealed uh, all at one time, but instead it was a revelation came in stages. So this is the proof from the book, that if faith were complete with the affirmation of the Shahada, then there would be no meaning to increasing faith and no need to mention this. As for the proof from the Sunnah and the narrations, meaning the narrations of the Salaf, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, then they are mutawatir, giving this meaning of increase in the tenets of faith. So in the following hadith, four articles of faith are mentioned. In the next five, and in the third, nine, and in the fourth, even more. So here Imam uh, Abu, uh, Abu Ubaid is mentioning uh, several Nusus or text uh, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which are also illustrating that Iman is not static and he says he mentioned <coughs> he says as for the hadith in which four are mentioned is the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that an envoy from uh, Abdul Qais came to him and said, O Messenger of Allah, indeed we are a tribe from Rabi'ah, and between us and you are the unbelievers of Mother, who prevent us from coming to you. So we are unable to come to you except in the sanctified month. So command us with something that we may perform and call those that we have left behind to. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I command you with four. And I forbid you from four. Faith, 
Then he explained this for them. To testify that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah, and that Muhammad is the message of Allah. To establish the prayer, to give the zakat, and that you give a fifth of the war booty, I forbid you from four. Uh, and so in this hadith, he mentions that that uh, uh, that this is a part of faith. And so that's the shahid of this hadith, that this is a part of faith. And all of these are the pillars of uh, Islam, or from the pillars of uh, Islam, and those uh, are the testification, uh, or testifying on the tongue, making the shahada. And also likewise, the salat and the zakat, which are uh, amal, uh, A'mal Ajawarah. Those are deeds or actions of the of the limbs. They're physical acts of Iman. So all of those things were also included in the statement or in the uh, term or reference as Iman or faith. And in the second, as for the hadith in which five are mentioned then it is the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala that he heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying Islam is built upon five pillars the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah establishing the prayer, giving the zakat fasting Ramadan and making pilgrimage to the house all of these are the testimony uh, the uh, five pillars of Islam also fall under Iman as for the hadith in which nine are mentioned, then it is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Indeed, Islam has landmarks and lights as does a road. From them are that you believe in Allah and do not commit shirk with him. Establish the prayer, give the zakat, fast in Ramadan, make pilgrimage to the house, enjoy the good, forbid the evil, that you give the salam to your family when you enter amongst them, and that you give salam to the people as you pass by them. So the one who leaves any of this, then he has left a portion of Islam, and the one who leaves off uh, all of them has thrown Islam behind his back. This also shows us that these are a part of uh, faith. And further evidence with regards to this hadith is that he mentioned uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And we know in the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he said Samitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayyakul Man ra'a minkum munkarin fa liyagayra hu biyad fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisanihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa thalika aruf al iman The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the weakest form of faith is when you see an evil and you hate it in your heart. And he, and he mentioned that the highest part as in the order as is mentioned in the hadith is to change it with one's hand and if they're unable to do so they change it with their tongue meaning speak out against it letting us know that all of those are part of iman so there's so much evidence from the book of Allah and the sunnah the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show us that iman fluctuates that iman is not static that iman is composed of the statements of the tongue the uh, belief in the heart and actions of the limb that refute the murjia and their intiqad and even is a refutation of the murjia to fuqaha those imams like uh, those imamat uh, 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 hanafiya that have this uh, this mistake in intiqad he also mentioned in another hadith he said so the ignorant people or he mentioned also so the ignorant people thought that all of these ahadith were self-contradicting uh, due to the variation of numbers in them. But they are, and all praise is due to Allah, by His mercy, far from contradiction. For their difference lies in the fact that the obligations of faith were revealed in stages. So each time Allah revealed a new obligation of faith, it increased the number of tenets of faith until they reach 70 branches, as occurs in the hadith that is established from him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said, faith is 70 odd branches, its most excellent is the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah, and its lowest is removing the harmful thing 
from the road. Meaning all of those things are a part of Iman. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned them all as branches of Iman, letting us know that all of these, the three components of faith that Ahl Sunnah believes to be the components of faith are come from the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, who described uh, all of those uh, actions, if you will, as a part of Iman. So even if the number mentioned is greater, they still do not contradict those ahadith that came before it, for those refer to the foundation of the faith, whereas these refer to the branches of faith. Uh, another important point is as uh, Imam Abu Abayd is mentioning <coughs> that uh, that these are a part of faith and likewise he is illustrating that Iman also was revealed in stages as we mentioned that in the advent of Islam in the beginning of the uh, message being sent to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Imam uh, that Iman and Tawheed, uh, the Prophet وسلم, was calling the Tawheed for 10 years in Mecca before any of those other legislations, those legislated duties which are a part of physical actions and physical actions of ibadah, physical acts of worship that before they were even legislated, letting us know that Iman at that time was restricted to just the call to Tawheed and understanding Tawheed. And then the Imam said, he said, so we believe, meaning this is Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and Allah knows best that this is the last statement with which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam depicted faith because the number finished at, uh, after this, and with it the characteristics of faith were completed as is testified to by the saying of Allah, uh, this day I have completed your religion for you and perfected my favor upon you. Tariq bin Shihab reported that the Jews said to Umar bin al-Khattab anhu, May Allah have mercy upon him. Indeed you recite a verse which had it been revealed amongst us, we would have taken that day as an Eid. And this verse was mentioned. So Umar anhu, said, Indeed I know when it was revealed and on what day it was revealed. It was revealed on the day of Arafah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was standing on Arafah. Sufyan said, I do not know whether he said on the day of Jumu'ah or not. Also, then the Imam said, he said from Ibn Abi Ammar, who said, Ibn Abbas anhu, recited this verse while there was a Jew in his presence. So the Jew said, if this verse had been revealed amongst us, we would have taken that day as an Eid. Ibn Abbas anhu, uh, uh, replied, it was revealed on the day of Eid, the day of Jumu'ah, the day of Arafah. From Sha'bi, who said, it was revealed from uh, upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he was standing on Arafah, when shirk had vanished, and the signposts of Jahiliyyah had been destroyed, and not a statue remained hanging in the house, meaning the Kaaba. So Allah exalted as he mentioned the completion of the religion in this verse. And it was revealed 81 days before the death of the Prophet وسلم, as is reported from Ibn Juraj. So if faith was complete by mere affirmation while the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was in Mecca as stated by these people, then there would be no meaning to completion of the religion. For how can something be completed that is already complete and come in its final form? Abu Ubaid then said, So if someone were to ask you, so what are these 70 branches? It would be said to him, they have not been named for us collectively so that we may mention them. But knowledge does allow us to say that they are from the actions of obedience to Allah and taqwa. But even though they may not have been mentioned in any specific hadith, if you were to scrutinize the various narrations, you would find them dispersed throughout them. Did you not hear this saying, his saying concerning removing the harm, uh, the harmful thing, and that it was a branch of faith? And likewise, his saying in another hadith, modesty is a branch of faith, 
and in a third, shame is a branch of faith, and in a fourth, asceticism is from faith, and in a fifth, fulfilling contracts, promises is from faith. So all of these are from the branches of faith. And from them is the hadith of Ammar, three characteristics are from faith, giving in charity freely, being just even at the expense of yourself, and spreading the salam amongst the people. So all of these ahadith that Abi Ubaid uh, Rahmatullah Rahmatul Wasi is mentioning, these ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they all are showing and characterizing what? What is the point of mentioning these ahadith? The point of mentioning these ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is they all illustrate that they fall under faith. All of these actions fall under faith. All of these actions of ibadah, all these various types of ibadah, whether they're ibadah qalbiya, ibadah uh, ibadah uh, uh, amaliya, or ibadah uh, lisaniya, or on the tongue, whether they're actions of the tongue, actions of the heart, actions of the limbs, they all fall under uh, iman and faith. Then there are the well-known ahadith mentioning the completeness of faith wherein he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, asked which creation is the greatest with respect to faith? It was said the angels. Then it was said, it was said, uh, O Messenger of Allah, so he said, rather a nation that will come after you and he mentioned their characteristics and from the, these is his saying. Indeed the believer with the most complete faith is the best of them in character. Likewise his saying, a man will not have complete faith until he leaves lying in jest and arguing even if he be in, uh, on the truth. And in a similar hadith is reported from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu and Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala And more clear than this is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa pertaining to the intercession wherein he said, So the one whose heart contains a barley grain uh, weight and a wheat's grain uh, of, of weight and an atom's weight of faith will be removed from hell. And from them is the hadith when he was asked about whispering to which he replied, that is the pure and unadulterated faith. And likewise the hadith of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, indeed faith starts as a white spot on the heart. So each time faith increases, the white spot increases in magnitude. There are a great number of narrations concerning this whose mention will lengthen the discussion that serve to, clar to clarify to you the correlation of faith in the heart and with actions. And all of them, or most of them, stress that righteous actions are from Iman. So how is it possible to oppose these by way of falsification or rejection? And from these things that testify to the truth of its correlation with actions is the saying of Allah, the Almighty, the believers are only those whose hearts tremble when Allah is mentioned, and when His verses are recited, they increase them in faith. And upon their Lord they put their trust. To His saying, they are in truth the believers. So Allah did not give faith a reality except with action upon these conditions mentioned in the verse. And the one who thinks that merely a saying makes one a true and complete believer, even if there is no action accompanying the same, is one who is opposing the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.